every county and every community has its unique um, challenges and opportunities for sure. Uh, but there's been some themes um, uh, across, I think, the state. Uh, one being the opioid and um, substance abuse issue. Uh, I heard again today uh, from leaders uh, here in Cottonwood that it's not just opioids. It's as we crack down on, on opioids and we're providing more opportunities for treatment for people, they're starting to see uh, methamphetamine, methamphetamines uh, popping up again. And so, you know, the cartels and others are, are creative in how they kind of shift their approach. And so we have to be holistic about uh, how we're preventing, educating, and uh, treating substance abuse all the way around. So that's been a theme. The tragedies that we've heard from every community are very real. So many families have been impacted by this, and uh, we've got to have a whole of society approach. Uh, infrastructure is one that also comes up, uh, the importance for strong infrastructure and funding. Um, at the, you know, whether that's I-17 uh, or the I-11 project or even just local infrastructure needs where there could be some federal funding. Uh, talked about uh, workforce uh, issues that uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, companies that are having a hard time filing qualified workers and uh, I heard about the career and technical education initiatives you have here which I, I want to know more about. Sounds really exciting and a great model uh, for how to address uh, some of these issues with young people and um, also um, support to our military and our veterans and making sure that they get the care uh, that they need, especially in rural communities where sometimes the uh, access is a challenge and um, cumbersome rules about having to drive long distances you know, to get a doctor's appointment. So we fixed some of this with the VA Mission Act. Uh, it's being um, implemented over the next year, but I wanna make sure that we are providing strong oversight during that implementation so that veterans uh, get the care they need, uh, regardless of where they live, uh, from the doctor that they choose. And can you talk about this bill that you recently introduced to reintroduce the Debbie Smith Act and why that's important to you? Sure. Uh, this is, is very important um, as someone who is a sexual assault survivor myself. Uh, the Debbie Smith Act provides federal resources to local communities to uh, process uh, backlogs in uh, rape kits. Uh, and to assist them uh, in, in support to the, you know, the criminal process to uh, identify, again, whether it's old cases or new cases, um, to be able to identify uh, who the perpetrators were and bring them to justice. And we've seen uh, so much, uh, so many results from this uh, since the uh, act was first uh, passed into law across the, across the country. And so we want to keep that funding strong and have it... Uh, uh, continue on because this is uh, getting justice for sexual assault survivors is something that's personal for me. And oh, you've been very vocal about the Air Force really needing to take action, but would you say it's the military as a whole? Yes. Absolutely. Like yeah. I was in the Air Force, yeah. so my experiences um, both as a survivor and as a commander were in the Air Force, but the entire military has a sexual assault problem. And some initiatives have been put in force over the last years and some positive things really have happened but more needs to be done it's unacceptable that we have over 6,000 reports of sexual assault in um, uh, 2017 and so I'm really pushing on them now uh, more than ever um, and had uh, key meetings and conversations so far um, just uh, two days ago with the uh, acting secretary of defense and the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff um, meetings with um, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force and conversations with the Secretary of the Air Force uh, and others. So we're, I'm, I'm pushing on all of them, um, but my experiences and my strong relationships are with the Air Force, and I think you know they could be uh, moving out to be a model uh, as we work with all the services in order to address this issue and, and stop it. Can you talk about your involvement with uh, Paul Gosar and that bipartisan initiative, uh, one, the big uh, lands package that President Trump just signed, yeah. specifically the Cotton Land Exchange. Yeah, sure. So this is an example where it literally takes an act of Congress uh, for local communities to get better access uh, you know, to what are a significant amount of federal lands across Arizona. I mean, we have a very high percentage of federal lands in our communities. Uh, so when local communities actually want to uh, develop or move forward on something, it takes an act of Congress in order to uh, authorize these land exchanges. Uh, so when we were in the House, uh, Congressman Gosar and I worked together on this uh, land exchange bill. Um, we then introduced it uh, in the Senate, working with Senator Sinema, and then we were able to include it in the larger lands package that was just signed by the President a couple days ago. 
So this is a big deal. It's providing more opportunity for uh, local communities to be able to get access to federal lands and uh, you know move forward to benefit people in the community. You've also been very vocal about water policy, uh, specifically concerning issues with Lake Mead. <coughs> yeah. How do you plan to represent your constituents here uh, w concerning the Verde Valley and making sure it stays flowing? Sure. So. Uh, look, Arizona, uh, water is our future, and we've got to make sure whether it's uh, the Colorado River or our other water policies uh, that we have sustainable access to water uh, for future generations. The drought contingency plan that the state just worked uh, on related to the Colorado River was a part of a seven-state initiative um, because if they didn't uh, agree to how they were going to address it at the state level, then the feds were going to tell them how to deal with the drought. And so our role now that the seven states are nearly final in coming to an agreement about how to deal with the, the drought, uh, I am the Water and Power Subcommittee Chair on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee. So as soon as that's finalized, which we expect to happen actually as early as early next week, then we will be introducing legislation. Um, I will be the lead on it. We'll expect to have um, all 14 senators from all seven states that codifies um, the drought contingency plans that have been agreed to by the seven states. And that is going to have to uh, be an act of Congress uh, in order to allow the states to be the ones who took that initiative. So I'm really proud of Arizona, the governor, all the stakeholders who got together to come up with Arizona's plan, but we've got to get it across the finish line with the legislation. And so you hopefully will be looking for that next week. But there's wa complex water issues you know, all over the state. And we've got to make sure we work together with innovation and conservation uh, partnering with local communities and at the state and federal level uh, to make sure our water needs you know, meet our, our future uh, opportunities for our community. Uh, President Donald Trump declared a national state of emergency with what's going on along our border, and yeah. you've been a supporter of that. Why is this a state of emergency? Well, what's been going on on the border has been a crisis for a very long time, and I'm extremely frustrated representing a border state, uh, representing a border district in the past, that people are playing politics with, with what is a security and humanitarian crisis at the border. Uh, we now see the cartels are uh, taking advantage of loopholes in our laws and trafficking uh, children um, in, in a way that's been unprecedented uh, in uh, incentivizing um, you know, women and children and others to be taking a long and dangerous journey. Uh, to come to our border and we need the humanitarian assistance. We need the border security We've got to stop the drugs from coming in over 70,000 people died from opioid overdose last year uh, And more needs to be done So we need to listen to those on the ground who are dealing with this crisis every single day and provide the resources to them that they need That includes barriers where they are needed some replacement barriers some new barriers It also includes the right number of agents uh, the detection equipment other technology and closing some of the loopholes in our law. Congress should have put legislation on the president's desk to fully fund what was needed, uh, but they didn't. And so I, um, I wish we weren't in the situation where the president declared a national emergency. I had some concerns about uh, potentially where some of the funding was gonna come from related to military construction projects. Uh, talked to the acting secretary of defense twice about that and the four Arizona projects that were funded in fiscal year 19 are not going to be touched for this diversion of funding. And I think Congress needs to do more. We gotta get ready on next year's legislation to put uh, resources uh, into border security, into fighting the drug uh, crisis, uh, and doing what needs to be done. Stop playing politics with it, uh, and let's secure our border. So, I mean, I'm gonna keep fighting to secure our border and, and, and make a difference uh, in my role as a Senate, because this is so important for Arizona.